Well, I am super excited to be at the Labyrinth of Jareth Masquerade Ball at the historic Downtown Park Plaza Hotel in downtown Los Angeles. This event is really fantastic. It's a great costume spectacle full of people. It's sort of inspired by the film Labyrinth. There's a whole bunch of really great things we're going to see inside tonight. I'm really happy to be here. My name is Lenora Claire, and this is Hooray for Hollywood. I feel very fortunate that the man that created this fantastic event, Sean Strider, gave us a moment of his time to do a quick interview. How was it that you went about, you know, sort of making this an event a, a reality? Oddly enough, when I did the first one, I had never been to a masquerade ball before. I was definitely inspired by Labyrinth and Legend, fantasy films like that. All of us are artists and writers and sculptors, and we've been adding bits of story and really elaborate prop pieces, really elaborate costumes, and more people have joined over the years that have just made it that much better, that much more detailed. I am David McNeil, and I am the Lord Chamberlain for the Labyrinth of Jareth Fantasy Masquerade Ball, which means I'm the front of house manager. Today has been load in. Everybody in the crew is along with a whole bunch of volunteers meeting up at the Cypher House, bringing in truckload after truckload of everything you see behind me so that later on this evening when we open the gates to the court and our patrons come in, the Court of Labyrinth is, is here. Well, hi, I'm Sasha Travis and I'm the artistic director for the ball. The stage productions have gone from being lots of different groups getting together to put on a production to us having auditions and bringing in our own crew and making a troupe. Labyrinth of Jareth is many things to many people, but primarily it is a, a gathering of people who are all dreamers, who are seeking to place that spark of magic back in the world, carry it out into the night. And it's because of this gentleman that we're here tonight at this wonderful event. Why don't you tell us a bit about what this project means to you and why we're all here? Well, this project in particular, I really wanted to showcase all the wonderful creative societies, locations, events going on in Los Angeles. I've always been so impressed by the extent that people take this and the love and passion they put into this that I really wanted this to be the premier event to show what Hooray for Hollyweird is all about. Well, one of the things I'm so impressed by is that you've managed to get so many different subcultures all together in one place. And it's super cool because unlike Comic-Con, which is just totally overwhelming, you've created this sort of like it's almost like a prom for all these subcultures to get together and meet and interact and like how does that feel to get all these people together and just sort of see everything happening? It's wonderful. I mean we have people who come from all over the world to come to this event. The steampunkers, the cosplayers, the furries, the wild fantastical elf people. We're so unbelievably lucky. We have the best crowd in the world. Are you elves or fairies? And is that asking, I don't mean to be offensive, is that like asking a dwarf if they're a midget? I don't mean to know, but are you, speaking for your people, are you elves or fairies? They'll come to me, right, Brad? They'll just come and you're gonna talk to them. See, they will, like, perfect. Can you, hi. Can you? Okay. Oh, well, she has a, a sock puppet to talk to. Hi. Thank you. This has been a very special conversation with the puppet lady. Thank you. Oh dear, you have to watch out for these goblins. These okay. goblins are very dangerous. I'm gonna just do my best here. And your name, sir? Steve. There's just something so wrong. I am sorry. I have to do that again. So I'm here with Tony and Connor, and Tony was telling me a bit about this. Adorable, Connor. I uh, was telling me a bit about this Viking group that he's been doing. This armor that Connor was just wearing, he just made today. So that's his uh, Viking helmet he made a few weeks ago, and then he did the uh, armor to match mine. Whacking stick. That's, that's what's really important. Every man needs a whacking stick. So you're all you're all set. I'm amazed. Um, I don't know how this is going to work, but can you tell me your name? He's the strong and silent type. I like tall dudes. So you have to tell me a bit about this. I've never quite seen Polynesian meets Victorian before. We call these looks jungle punk. It's uh, our envisioning of Tarzan and Jane just back from the continent. And whoops, they have to go to an elegant affair. So which costume, in your expert opinion, have you been most blown away by since you've been here? Oh, geez. Well, does yours count? <laughs> of course, I think it's totally the best. And thank you. I'm the winner. You win. <laughs> but other than me. So it seems like every subculture kind of has their own doll squad, like a group of women. They walk in, they're just like all super cute. Hi, I'm Amy Amnesia. I'm a member of the Freak Show Deluxe Carnival Style Sideshow. My name's Andy. 
You look at me, did you make that yourself or? I did not make the corset, but I did make these pieces. I made the hat, which has a working clock. Wow. I did blow this piece of glass. This is my holy water pistol pack. And I use my holy water pistols to shoot out holy water at the vampires. My name is Sir Conrad Wright III. I'm with the League of Steam. Um, we basically handle vampires, ghosts, zombies, any kind of supernatural creature that you can imagine. We basically have a solution to take care of the problem. Can you take care of those little twilight brats? Because I find them really annoying. It's really nice that the men are here and they're so well behaved because the women, you know, some of us, we're kind of putting it all out there and they're just, they're total gentlemen. It's like the most pleasurable form of asexuality. It's like masturbation mixed with spontaneous combustion. Obviously, this is the kind of skill that one doesn't just pick up. Tell me a bit about, you know, what you do and your costuming and acting and all of that. I'd just love, love to hear about it. Well, I recently was head costumer for a film. I also uh, do that in between my acting and my writing gigs, as we all do. What may I ask you do in your, your regular life? I'm a, I'm a designer and an artist by trade. I'm a professional belly dancer and we're doing a fantasy version of traditional belly dance tonight. I'm a go-go dancer, a model, and a stilt walker. Universal Studios is where you'll see me most. You'll see me dancing on stilts at Christmas. I work in Hollywood as a stand-in and photo double. Um, I won the reality show Search for the Next Elvira. Um, and I work at Comic-Con every year. So I had to stop this gentleman because I was completely blown away. And, and like a place full of amazing costumes. You, you stand out, sir. So please tell me a little bit about your device. Uh, explain how it came to be. Oh, these are a pair of wings that I built uh, a while ago. I use uh, little CO2 charges and uh, it just actuates some pistons in the back and uh, they open up really fast. So if, if you like me, do they go up? Is that how it works? Yeah, it would yes. Okay. Yes. Good to know. Good to know. So do you have any advice for a novice like myself? Like I've learned like the goblins are trouble, they'll yeah. like mess with your skirt. Is there any other advice or things that I should look out for? Well, a lot of times for people who are coming for their first time, they don't know what to wear, they're not entirely sure. I just say, you know, go ahead and try. I've got a daughter who's been coming for eight years. I've been associated with it for nine. It becomes part of your life and it seems to do that for not just those of us who are involved in building and making this show, mm -hmm. but also for the patrons who come back to see us again and again, year after year. You can really tell what the heart of a community is like by that when you go to the girls' restroom, the conversation the ladies are having. And I have to tell you, it was like the nicest, coolest bunch of women. There's no reason to not have wonder and appreciation for everything in life. Come and check it out. And when you come and you see what people have been doing for years, it's like you have so many better ideas for your next year. I'm really jealous that Lenora got to hang out in the Naked Goblin room, though. <laughs> I cool. even haven't been able to do that and she did so I hope yeah. you enjoyed the Naked Goblin room. It was pretty great because yeah they had all the prosthetics on and no pants so that's that's how we do it here. Yep. That's great. All right. Whew. Oh my god I am so beat. I've had the most amazing time. I flirted with a bunch of elves. I had goblins messing with my hair and my dress. I don't even know what's going on. You know I thought I was the kind of person who'd seen everything that was of course till I came here and now I've really seen everything. Yeah, I, I don't even know what's going on anymore. But I've had the most amazing time. Thank you so much for having me. Again, my name is Lenore Claire, and this is Hooray for Hollyweird.